the uh, Chase Manhattan, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo, Wachovia, so on down the line, to AIG in the insurance realm. These are zombie institutions, insolvent, bankrupt. The only thing to do with them is to seize them, put them through Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That'll probably turn into Chapter 7 bankruptcy, liquidation. And above all, triage the derivatives on their books. There's no way to bail out a $1.5 quadrillion black hole of derivatives. But nevertheless, they tried. They will, of course, try to regain some of this money back. But their debts, unlike any other period in history, are now a quantum size bigger than the entire global GDP by a factor of 50 to 100. It's, it's almost infinite amount of debt. If you really look at the numbers because of the massive, massive debt, and right now total debt in this country is about 375 percent of the gross domestic product. And that's not including derivatives. If you put the derivatives in, it's probably 20 to 30 times gross domestic product. It's beyond what anybody has ever even considered. While they were looting North America into the ground, the International Banking Syndicate was simultaneously executing the same scam in over a hundred other nations. So who got the money? To financial institutions in, in Europe and other countries. Which ones? I don't know. Half a trillion dollars and you don't know who got the money? Well, Obama's got uh, one difficulty with this Congress. It's the number of freshman Democrats that got elected. Uh, many of these people know that they <laughs> got their seats from, and, and many of which uh, uh, got seats in, in uh, the Senate and Congress from uh, long-held Republican seats. They know that the, the people back in their states and in, in their constituencies will not tolerate this any longer. So. Uh, up against the Republicans and the Blue Dog Democrats are these freshman congressmen, uh, Democratic congressmen and senators, and they're not, uh, they don't seem like they want to go along with the program. So if there's any hope, it'll come from these freshmen. The Constitution says, no money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. This Do you money think, is not drawn from the Treasury. Let, well, let's talk about that. Do you think it's consistent with the spirit of that provision of the Constitution for a group like the FMOC to hand out a half a trillion dollars to foreigners without any action by this Congress? Congress approved it in the Federal Reserve Act. When was that? Quite a long time ago. I don't know the exact date. Uh, 19, years ago. The original Act is 1914, I believe. I, I don't know whether this provision was in 1914 or not, but the Federal Reserve Act was in 1913. All right, and at that time, the entire gross national product of this country was well under half a trillion dollars, wasn't it? I don't know. Is it safe to say that nobody in 1913 contemplated that your small little group of people would decide to hand out half a trillion dollars to foreigners? What the bailout legislation really did was give a blank check backed up by U.S. taxpayers to offshore mega banks. Of course, uh, uh, Congress has oversight. If, if you read the uh, Constitution, our founders were very clear, anything to do with taxes and money is put into the hands of both houses of Congress together. Both houses of Congress together must approve it. Uh, because it's a buck, because that's why we fought the revolution. Taxation without representation was part of it. Foreign banks, Société Générale of France, about 10 billion for a French bank. Deutsche Bank of Germany. Did Deutsche Bank need the money? How much did they get from the bailout? Well, they told us they got 12 billion from the bailout. And Barclays Bank of Britain, 10 billion. So you're up to almost 50 billion dollars to bail out a series of foreign banks that were derivatives counterparties of AIG, plus Goldman Sachs. This is the biggest swindle, not only in the history of the United States, this is the biggest swindle and transfer of wealth in the history of the Western countries. And we've seen all these cronies from Wall Street uh, with the combination to the vaults around the country and they've uh, just looted the, the treasury and the banks and, and uh, the securities industry dry. This is by probably an order of magnitude the biggest fraud in, in history. 
Over the next 10 months, $23.7 trillion was stolen from the U.S. Treasury. The gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. McHenry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, the tune of $23,700,000,000 worth of taxpayer exposure for the bailouts is quite striking. The calculation right now is that with Obama, we've got $24 trillion as a line of credit available only to Wall Street banks, insurance companies, credit cards, uh, mutual fund companies, and others, but only financial institutions. $24 trillion of money from the Federal Reserve, from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and from the Treasury in the form of the bailout of October 2008. The Federal Reserve, the private holding company for the offshore banks, arrogantly told Congress and the American people that it was none of their business what the private banks did with the people's money. Uh, one very interesting exchange, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont asking Bernanke, we have given upwards of two trillion dollars to various financial institutions. You've got to tell me, where did the money go? And Bernanke simply stonewalls and says, I won't tell you. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. You tell us who they are. No. Do you have to be a large, greedy, reckless financial institution to apply for these monies? There is no subsidy. There is no capital involved. There is no gift involved. It is a collateralized, short-term liquid loan that is both over-collateralized and is recourse to the company itself. We have never lost a penny doing it. And how can other institutions make, get, get uh, those loans as well? According to the law, we are supposed to be lending to depository institutions. Let me just say this, Mr. Chairman. I have a hard time understanding how you have put $2.2 trillion at risk uh, without uh, making those names available, those institutions public. And we're going to introduce legislation today, by the way, to demand that you do that. It is unacceptable to me that that goes on. Behind me, the Federal Reserve... Uh is probably the least transparent agency in the federal government. One could even argue that the Central Intelligence Agency is more transparent than the Federal Reserve. The fact is, is that the American people want to know more of the secrets of the temple, as the book was uh, before you were born. The secrets of the temple. <laughs> the Fed, as you know, is just a monopoly by the bankers. This is simply putting the fox is in charge of the hen house. Personally, I'd be in favor of Congress just nationalizing the Fed and, and getting the bankers out of there. They're, they're, you know, they're just stealing from the American people, put it directly in the hands of Congress and, and let Congress decide, uh, rather than this cabal of uh, bankers deciding their own rates of profit uh, at the expense of the American people. Since the Federal Reserve's creation in 1913, patriots have labored tirelessly to alert the American people to the true nature of the Federal Reserve. Throughout its 90-plus year history, most Americans falsely believed that the Federal Reserve was a government agency. But today, scientific opinion polls show that the vast majority of the public is aware of the fact that the Federal Reserve is a front company for an offshore private banking cartel that dominates not just the United States, but almost every other nation on Earth. It's never been written about in any book that I've found as to who gave these guys the authority or permission to be the international bankers for the world. Why would you even need international bankers? Why would any government agree to, to use them? Why would you need to use them? Why can't any country create its own money? It tells you there was already an existing superstructure, already in existence, maybe two, three hundred years ago, to give these guys permission to somehow be the overlords of all money for all countries. Polls also reveal that 75% of Americans demand a public audit of the secretive organization. By the summer of 2009, Congressman Ron Paul's bill to audit the Fed had gained more than 280 sponsors in the House. But the private Fed's high-powered lobbyists were able to block a vote on the bill in the Senate. 